Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's look at the first of our four thermodynamic processes, the isobaric process. Now, the problem that we're given is that there's one mole of a diatomic gas, the pressure is at 0.2 atmosphere, that will not change it because it's isobaric, means pressure remains constant. We start at a volume of 50 liters and the gas expands to a volume of 150 liters, three times the original volume, and we want to find the work done by the gas the heat added to the gas, and the change in the, of the internal energy of the gas. And regardless essentially what the problem is asked, we know that it's always going to look something like this. The pressure is constant, so that's the baric. We go from A to B, or it, we go from left to right or right to left, depends upon if the volume increases or decreases, but it looks the same. The only thing that changes is the sign. If it goes to the right, the work done is positive because the gas does work from our definition. We have the first law of thermodynamics that never changes. In this case, none of the three components of that equation are zero, so they are what they are. The work done is going to be the pressure times the change in the volume, and since we're given the pressure and we know what the change in the volume is, we can easily calculate the work done, so that's easy. But to find out what delta U is in Q, that's a little bit more difficult because we need to know the change in the temperature, which is not given. At least, that's where we should start, and regardless of the problem, we should be able to just simply write it out and write the equations down as they are. We can easily figure out the work done because it's pressure times the change in the volume. So in this case, the work done equals the pressure times the change in the volume. So in this case, the pressure is 0.2 atmosphere, but we have to convert that to pascals. So that's 101,325 pascals per atmosphere. And then the change in the volume, we have to convert that to cubic meters, and 1,000 liters go into cubic meters, so it would be 0.15 cubic meters minus 0.05 cubic meters, essentially 0.1 cubic meter. And so with a calculator, we can quickly figure that out. So we have 0.2 times 101.325 times 0.1 equals, and it's 2,026 joules. So the work done is equal to 2,026 joules. There we go. So that was easy enough. In an isobaric process, pressure remains a constant, you know the change in volume, there's a work done. However, how do we come up with the change in the temperature? So for that, we need to go to our ideal gas equation, PV equals NRT. So I notice I have a red box around it. These are the two key equations for any of these processes, essentially. And so what we can say is we can take this equation and say that the temperature is equal to the pressure times the volume divided by N times R. So when we plug in the numbers there, we can find the temperature for A or B. So in this case, if we want to know for A, we need the volume in A. If we know, want to know it for B, we need the volume for B. So, pressure will be again 0.2 atmospheres. We have to convert that to Pascals. The volume at A would be 0.05 cubic meters, divided by the number of moles, which is 1, and the gas constant 8.315. And so that gives us the temperature at A. Of course, for that, we need a calculator. So, point. 0.2 times 101.325 times 0.05 divided by 8.315 equals, and it is 100 and, so let's say, 22 Kelvin. So 122 Kelvin. So what is the temperature at B? Well, notice that since we have three times the volume, the only thing that changes is that this goes from 0.05 to 0.15, Three times the volume means three times the temperature. So it would be three times the temperature at A, because everything else stays the same. And so that would be that number times two, uh, times three. And that would be 366 Kelvin. The reason why I used my calculator, because I want to make sure I didn't have a runoff error, because it's not exactly 122 Kelvin. All right, so now that we know the two temperatures, we can easily now calculate delta U and Q. First of all, delta U. So delta U is equal to NC sub V delta T. 
And so N is 1. C sub V, we're given that it's a mole of diatomic gas, so we go to diatomic gas, C sub V is 5 over 2R. So 5 over 2, and R is 8.315. Change in temperature from 366 to 122, so that will be 366 minus 122. All right, so 366 minus 122, that's 244 times 2.5 times 8.315 equals, and we have 5,072. So delta U is equal to 5,072, and that would be joules. So we have work done, and we have delta U. Now for Q, heat added to the gas, we can do the same thing. We could say it's NC sub P delta T, or we can use the first law of thermodynamics that tells us that delta U is equal to Q minus W, which means Q equals delta U plus W. But in other words, we simply have to add these two together. And so it would be 5072 plus 2026 which is, I'm running out of room here, that would be 7,098. And that would be Q. All right, so there's the final answer. In this isobaric process, we added a little bit over 7,000 joules of heat. Part of that was used to do work, and part of it increased the internal energy of the gas. Now, if you want to make sure you did this correctly, you can calculate Q by using this equation and use C sub P, which in this case would be 7 over 2 bar, to see if you get the same result. But I'm pretty confident that you would. And so here's a nice example of how to deal with an isobaric process.